How do you treat fibromyalgia? Do the drugs even work? This has been a big challenge for clinicians looking after patients with fibromyalgia because one of the main symptoms for fibromyalgia is pain. There's often an expectation and an understanding both among clinicians as well as patients that, that there must be a drug for the pain, that the pain must be coming from a particular structure which can be treated with either a drug or an injection or an infusion or something to take away the pain locally. Both these forms of treatments, whether they are drugs or interventions, have a major problem. They don't work that well, they are not that effective in everyone and they don't last that long. So we are finding, certainly in the UK and for that matter in many parts of the world, that trying to treat fibromyalgia with only these two options, either a drug or an injection or an infusion, is not a long-term sustainable strategy. The first step is to say, well, what is this condition then and why does it not respond to drugs or injections? Firstly, neuroimmune disorder. That's what fibromyalgia is. It's a condition of the nervous and immune system not functioning well. In another video, I've gone more extensively into the causes of fibromyalgia. But ultimately, in the United Kingdom and for the matter, in many parts of the world, the International Association for Study of Pain, IASP, has actually classified fibromyalgia as a form of chronic primary pain. Indeed, it is the prototypical example of a condition where the nervous system gets sensitized. There's a term for this kind of pain. It's called nociplastic pain. And that means that in this kind of condition, there's no obvious evidence of nerve damage. There's no obvious evidence of inflammation. And therein lies the answer to the solution. If you don't have an obvious source of inflammation, then drugs like anti-inflammatories do not work. If there's no obvious evidence of nerve damage, then drugs that are for nerve pain management do not work. And if there isn't an obvious nerve that's being affected, then trying to block a nerve using injections or infusions, again, isn't that effective, nor does it last very long. So that's the main reason that we are finding that these conditions do not lend themselves to a quick fix. So what can be exactly done for fibromyalgia? Certainly, I'm not saying that we need to throw the baby out of the bathwater. I think there is a role certainly for some medicines, for some interventions at the right time, for the right patient, for the right duration, but not so in the majority. What do I mean by that? Well, if we have established that it's the nervous and immune system that's sensitized, then calming the nervous and immune system down should be the longer term strategy. Some drugs can calm the nervous system down and certainly there are studies that suggest that amitriptyline, which is an old school antidepressant, and duloxetine, which is a kind of newer age antidepressant, are the only two drugs that have shown some degree of benefit and therefore, the NICE, which is an organization in the UK called the National Institute of Healthcare and Excellence, has guidelines which have looked at what are the treatments for chronic primary pain and fibromyalgia. The Royal College of Physicians in the UK has also released a guideline that looks into the suitable medications for fibromyalgia. And these two both agree that you could look at low doses of these antidepressant drugs. The NICE guideline then takes it one step further and says no other drug is really useful, whether that's an opioid like codeine or tramadol or an anti-inflammatory like naproxen or diclofenac or ibuprofen or paracetamol or the strong nerve pain medications like gabapentin or pregabalin or even the opioids. There's certainly some interest in a few drugs that are not licensed or not yet approved in the UK. And at the time of this video, there is some suggestion and some small case studies looking at drugs like low dose naltrexone. There's some suggestion that medicinal cannabis could be of use. 
but we don't have the level of evidence now to say that they are excellent or they'll work in everyone. But certainly there are patients who might get benefit from drugs in the right phase. So that's about medications. Interventions, there is a role for the right patient at the right time for certain injections like trigger point injections or lignocaine or lidocaine infusions of local anesthetic. But again, you'd have to discuss with your specialist to see whether you're the right person at the right time for that treatment to make a difference because these are all expensive and you need to be sure that these are going to be sustainable for you. But once you've taken the medications and interventions apart, there's a whole host of non-pharmacological, non-drug ways to calm the nervous and immune system. One way to calm the immune system is nutrition. So diet and nutrition is a big strategy for managing the pain of fibromyalgia. Other ways to calm the nervous and immune system are in optimizing sleep, reducing stress, ensuring that some kind of movement-based activity, whether that's Pilates or yoga or walking, is included. And lastly, a variety of mind-body techniques, whether that's mindfulness-based strategy, whether that's CBT, whether that's ACT, whether that's newer techniques like emotional awareness or expression therapy, journaling. And in this situation, I would certainly recommend apps like The Curable, which have a wealth of other non-drug techniques that one could try for trying to calm the nervous system down. Indeed, there's a suggestion that these kind of nerve conditions, also called neuroplastic conditions where the nerves are getting sensitized, there are certain techniques, newer techniques like somatic tracking or somatic experiencing or trauma-based, body-based approaches which take advantage of the body to process some of the trauma and the stress. They all can be quite powerful ways to reduce the pain. Maybe even newer techniques like EMDR, which is another mind-body technique. So keep a watch out for these techniques as the evidence grows. There's a potential that these could be helpful for managing fibromyalgia. So do not think only about the traditional mainstream drugs and interventions. There is a wealth of five other techniques, namely diet strategies, sleep optimization strategies, movement-based strategies, stress management techniques, and mind-body approaches, all of which can work as effectively or better than drugs or injections. I hope you found this video useful. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you. Thank you for watching the videos. I hope you're getting value from them. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button for notifications on when the next videos are to be released.